Hey guys, what's up? It's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. Please excuse the really amazing phone operator voice that I'm currently working with. I don't know whether it's the weather or the kiddos, but somehow I have yet again been infected with some sort of plague. Not really a fan, but there's not a whole lot I can do, so we're just gonna roll with it and make the best of it. I wanted to pop on today and talk about everything that I'm doing this week in speech. As y'all know, last week we did In the Tall Tall Grass. Awesome book. Love the activities. It was a huge hit. Definitely a new staple. Um, and this week I'm breaking out the Eric Carle, and I'm actually doing a book that I haven't done before by him, which I didn't think that was possible. But we will be reading Little Cloud, and if this is not the cutest book, I don't know what is. And I don't know how I've missed it, but I'm tardy to the party, and I love it. It's super cute. I love his illustrations, and he does a really good job of like illustrating what he's talking about. And it's perfect for my kiddos because we're working on things like basic concepts, vocabulary, turn-taking, um, following directions, and things like that. And this book has everything in it that I would need it to target. And also with my activity, that's just going to pull it all together. So I am doing this with all of my younger kiddos, preschool and kindergarten. Um, but the activities that I do with them are going to vary just a little bit. So I do head over to another preschool three days a week and I do a whole group lesson and then I do two days of small group lessons with the kids that just receive speech. But tomorrow, which is my whole group lesson, we are going to be making cloud dough. And fingers crossed it works because I know on Pinterest sometimes recipes end up not being as great as they seem. So follow me on Instagram to find out in my stories whether or not I survived this debacle. But it's basically two ingredient cloud dough, so you just need some cornstarch and some cheap conditioner. So I got two of these and then just like the giant bottle of suave coconut scented conditioner. And then I picked up some, I guess, baking supplies, if you will. I got the teal bowl, a spatula, and then also just like a throwaway measuring cup because probably not gonna wanna use any of this for actually cooking afterwards. We're actually going to do the entire sequence of making the cloud dough. So I made a bunch of cards to go with them and some of them are directional cards and then some of them are just what we're gonna need. So I have one for bowl, spoon, spatula, but I feel like it's gonna be easier for them to say spoon, a cornstarch, which I know is not the same container, conditioner, and then the measuring cup. Um, and then I have mix, pour, and then pass. So we're gonna be doing a huge group activity and I'm gonna be using these with the kids and I'm just gonna have them tell me what I need by using the pictures or if they are at the verbal level putting it in a small phrase or sentence for me. So that's gonna be super hands-on, I'm super excited. If there's time, I'm gonna bring some cookie cutters so we can make different cloud shapes, but something tells me that this is gonna take the entire session once we finish reading the book. For the rest of my kiddos, the rest of the week who are doing Little Cloud, and also for my small groups for that class, we are going to be making cloud pictures and cloud scenes. I don't have a mock-up to show you because I totally spaced on bringing home blue construction paper. Basically what we're gonna do is I grab some of these quick dry paint sticks at Michael's. I was looking for quick sticks and they did have them there, but they were only the small ones. And so they were like like glue stick size. And then these are like jumbo glue stick size. And I thought that they'd be easier for little hands. I only need the white, but if they do really dry in under two minutes, then these could be beneficial for the future. I wish they did sell them individually though. Anyway, ramble over. I'm going to be using this to make different clouds and cloud shapes, and then we're just going to write on the bottom what kind of cloud they made. And I think that'll be a super cute craft activity, and we can work on expanding on utterances, um, the following directions, as always. That's our favorite. And definitely identifying different vocabulary terms and different shapes and things like that. So this will be really great, especially for the kiddos in my home school, because we need to work a lot on that. Plus it also helps with some occupational therapy. So that's always a bonus. For my articulation kiddos, I know it's getting down to the wire and seeing them four times a week every day is kind of repetitive. So we are gonna do a french fry activity. This is an old activity that I made last summer and I haven't gotten to use it yet this year, but I used it last year and they loved it. It's technically a notebook activity, essentially. 
Um, and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to glue the sound french fry container into a marble notebook and then you can stick all of the different french fries in and kind of color them and, and practice them. It's great for carry over at home and to take home and kind of practice and different things like that. I love no prep, low prep stuff like this. This is in my TPT shop. I will link it down below if you are interested. Uh, for my younger kiddos, we are going to just glue it in and color them in throughout the week um, and then they can kind of take that home. And then for my older kids, I am going to just have one that's pre-made and we're just going to pull two and three french fries and they're going to have to come up with a sentence using all of those words at once to make it a little bit more difficult for them. Um, but like I said, this is amazing. I have it for, I think, all of the sounds. Um, it was one of my first activities that I ever made. Oldie but a goodie. So I'm excited to use this. I was thinking about saving it for my food unit, but I also have a burger game that I can use to play with my articulation kiddos then. As you can see, I'm all about food. I do have one little kiddo that is in a preschool class and he is not at the level of being able to sit for stories yet. Um, so I did want to do a shout out to the iPad and an iPad activity. This one is my school iPad, hence why it's so gross looking. That's probably also why I'm sick. But I do have an app that I love. I have used this since grad school, honestly. I don't even know when I found it years ago. It is called Peekaboo Barn, and it is adorable. And actually, now that I'm a, a big time SLP, I sprung for the actual version and not the demo version because I have a whole dollar ninety nine these days. So basically what you get is, oh goodness, I don't, it has children talking. Um, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this with the glare. Oh, there we go. Um, but essentially it's a large barn and it bounces um, and there's an animal inside and it makes animal noises and then you have to press on it to open the doors. It does its little spiel. The kid says what animal it is and then you have to press on it again to close the doors. So it's great for just like basic commands like open, close, more, things like that. Kids love it because who doesn't love the iPad? All of my kids love the iPad. But it's got like a fun song. Oh, McDonald's. You know, just really getting into it. So it bounces. Um, actually, the top one opens, and this one I think is the top. So you open it. Cat. How perfect. The cat. And then you can tap it to close. It's super adorable and the little boy that I use it with loves animals and he like has this really great way of memorizing animal noises and like linking them to the animal. So that's been super motivating for him. Um, we're working on wait time because he kind of just like lunges to open it. Um, more the basic requests, we're doing some signs with it um, and, and you know just different things like that. So that is what I'm going to use with him because he is so so into that. and. Probably a couple of my other younger kiddos I can use that with also if we finish up early enough. The last thing I wanted to show you guys isn't so much a speech activity, but I definitely finished my first shirt um, with the Cricut Maker, and right now it just says eat, which <laughs> is that not representative of my life or what? But it says eat, sleep, speech, repeat. I think these are super cute. I love these t-shirts. Um, and I really just wanted to like see if I could do it and definitely harder than it looks. So props to everybody that can like hand make all of the t-shirts. Um, my iron also is like 3000 years old. So that also probably had something to do with it. But I love these because I feel like even though it's technically like not the most professional, I can still wear it because it has something to do with my field and like be comfortable at work. So I'm really excited, very excited for this because I'm probably gonna make one for every day of the week and just wear my t-shirts also with sweaters because my office is cold. That's everything that I have for my kiddos this week in speech. Let me know down below in the comments if you've ever made cloud dough. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's as awesome as it looks on the internet. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. My handle is the speech loft. This way you can keep in touch with everything that's going on this week and you can see how the kids are responding to my activities. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more weekly ideas for speech activities for your kiddos. I hope you all have an amazing week and I'll see you guys next time.